Welcome to this look at new mods on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Another Friday rolls around. It's the 26th of February. We have a lot more mods today than we have had the last few days, and we have some updates. I'm going to roll in the updates from yesterday as well into today's. Not the mods, just the updates, uh, because there's a couple in there that I think were important to know about. They are as follows. So updates for yesterday, the 25th of February. Top left, we've got the Precision Farming DLC by Giant Software. That does say that the yield calculation for soybean, potatoes, sugar beet and sugar cane is now correct. And that field statistics on consoles are now correctly displayed after reloading the game. Uh, fixed issues with UI working while on a field on Mac. Um, Bucks County PA um, by TNT Modding. The update, like the previous maps, Eureka Farms and Blue Mountain... Uh, valley of his has now had an update to remove all the unrealistic equipment uh, they did reword it differently in the change log for this one um, they put it down as what was it removed unlicensed brands um, I didn't think he had any in there but it's, I think it's the unrealistic gear that's changed the John Deere 4755 4955 by AAA Modding the pickup 90, 1969 Brazil by Conta Camigo Modding the Offset Mass Holder by Fred Modding and the Farming Simulator Box Pack by Cashdan18 all had updates yesterday. So today's updates, top left, um, RDC FS19 by Alberto has been updated. If you're not aware of that map and don't know what that means, rather than seasons being on it, seasonally um, RDC does an update on the map. So every season there'll be a new one. So this is the Spring 2021 Spectacular. I would suggest going to the change log and read through. It's a completely new map every single time. If you thought going over Chellington Valley was complicated, this is mind-boggling what he does on this map every single time. There are new crop types added. There's no new production system been put in this time that says it allows you to produce tomatoes, lettuce, cauliflower, carrot, apple, orange, cherries, olives, grapes, acorns, chestnuts and almonds. It does say this one has been specifically aimed towards um, console, PS, uh, PlayStation and Xbox users. Go on and have a look if you haven't already. It is mind-bending. Um, Le Reside del Nord by Black Eyes Modding says it's an update. Technically, it's new. It was it came out over a week ago or so, but it was only on the Mod Hub very shortly and then disappeared. So it's back again. That's had an update. So technically a new map ish. The Class Area on 3000 series by Smetty, the Samson Slurry Pack by TF2020 Mods, the Optional Fertilization by TF2020 Mods, the Homer Slurry Pack by TF2020 Mods, the Joskin Silo Space 2245 by Bueno, and the Slurry Dealer Pack also by TF2020 Mods have all had updates today. In front of me then, we have got the old wooden fence by Hub Photos, 0 0.06 megabytes download, two slots each. On console, we've got a fence section with two stringers, is what they are? Maybe. Uh, and a post. These are under miscellaneous. 50 for the fence section, 25 for the post. Slot counts drop down from two to one. Um, not a bad thickness either, so line them up shouldn't be too bad. Um, but those are by Hub Photos. Next, we've got the brand yard signs by Stoneway Designs. 0 0.86 megabytes download, three slots on console. You can place these as advertising boards if you wanted to around your map, or to show your allegiance to a particular brand or equipment or something that you're using, or I don't know, I suppose you could set yourself up some kind of farm show and have the various different brands. That's not a bad idea, actually. That's quite good. Just thought of that. Um, three slots each, did I just say that? And these are under decorations. There are quite a few. There are 100 each. Three slots for the first one, which drops down to one. We've got um, an Agco, Big Bud, Brent Case, Challenger, Fent, Great Plains, JCB, John Deere, Lizard, Massive Ferguson, uh, New Holland, Pioneer, Ursus, Wilson Trailers. I think that's it. Yep. Um, so, yeah, quite a few options to choose from there. Like I say, for whatever reason you want to place them, or you might disregard them altogether. That's entirely up to you. Those are by Stoneway Designs. Next, we've got Pack of Fences. 0 0.78 megabytes download, one slot each. 
These are by PK Modding. We've got a section with um, slatted bits, top and bottom. We've got a section that's got the slats on the top, and then is it slatted? Doesn't matter. And then we got a post as well with a little slot. If you can line that up, <laughs> good luck. Uh, these are under. I think these were miscellaneous. Yep. So both fence panels are 500 each, and the post is 100. Slot counts drop down. Oh, they're one each anyway. So yeah, they will stay at one. Again, not too bad thickness-wise, so line them up shouldn't be too difficult. But, again, depends if you want to take the time to do it or not. That's entirely up to you. Those are by PK Modding. Moving on, we'll come back to those in just a second. We've got these, and I like these a lot. Um, this is the Pig Enclosure Nature by Omatana. Getting quite a good reputation on the Mod Hub and around the thing. Omatana for the various different things that have been coming out recently. So we've got a large pig enclosure and a small pig enclosure. Uh, these are designed to have all the trees and stuff in them, so it's more like a natural habitat. They live in forests, rooting around the, the roots of the trees. Um, oh, yeah, I skipped through the night, just suddenly realised there's going to be a lot of mess everywhere, but not to worry. The large one holds 300, the small one holds 20. Is that right? Yeah, 20. 17 slots for the large one, 17 slots for the small one, with all the detail and decoration. And you may think, that's just too fussy, it's too much. 17 slots, I'm not interested, it's too high. But what Omatana's done, is she's done each of these enclosures without all the undergrowth as well. So you can have a more kind of... I just I like that. I think that's a really cool-looking enclosure. Troughs are easy to find. Food troughs across the front. Dialogue boxes around the side here. Door opens and closes if you want to go in there. And there is lighting too. And we come round the enclosure. We've got the manure pit. We've got the slurry. We've got the bedding for straw. And we've got the water trough. All easy to find. And what you've they've also got, look, they've got this little climbing frame player in which they do walk up and they go up onto the top of... It's just something a bit different. And then the smaller version is just over here that holds 20. Again, all of the triggers are really straightforward and easy to find. Nicely detailed, nicely laid out. The trigger on this one is here. And then each of these I've also then got without all the uh, trees and stuff. So if you just want the most of the enclosure, you absolutely can. Without all the trees, they can drop down to seven slots. So you've got 17 slots with, seven slots without... And that's the same on both. Now this pack also comes with a little water hydrant, which is just there. The pack is 14.2 megabytes to download. The hydrant is found under miscellaneous, which we'll get to in a minute, and the enclosures are found under pig enclosures. Now it does say, the only thing, the only drawback for me personally, it does say that it comes there. Additionally, there is a small water hydrant that you can place beside the water trough. This is as close as I could get to the water trough. There's a standpipe mod by CNS Modding Anne Marie that I've used on lots of various different animal troughs, and you can put it right up next to it. I thought it'd be the same, but I cannot get it any closer. I've got another one further over. I think it might be over the back there. Again, I couldn't get it close enough to the trough. I mean, it's there, and let's be honest, having it that close to the trough is better than having to go half a way across the map to a lake or a pond or a river or, you know, a water tank. So it's not the end of the world. These you'll find under placeables and animal pens. So the large pig enclosures, with or without the trees, are 120,000. The small ones are 10,320 are the capacities. Um, but they're really cool. I, I, I like them. I like, I like all the, just all that foliage. It just adds to the bit of something. I love the fact that pigs climb up on the top of there as well. Very nice indeed by Omaton. Oh, sorry. Just remembered. Under miscellaneous, the water hydrant is 200 to buy. There we go. Next then, we've got these. <laughs> it's very cool. Um, 
This is the OBE PX125150. The Vespers is the Vespa 125150. 2.46 megabytes download. Two slots on console. This is by Black Eyes Modding. There's a few different options. You can have a kind of standard Vespa. Or you can have it with rack front and rear. This also comes with a little milk pallet, which you'll find under pallets. The pallet is empty, and then when you go to your cows or a source of, of milk, you can fill them up and you can transport your milk around. You can go and do milk deliveries or you know whatever you want to do. Um, it's a very neat little thing. Uh, the pallets are one slot each, I think. Yeah. These you'll find under vehicles and I think it was cars, not miscellaneous. Yeah, there we go. 3,800. We can have a six horsepower engine or an eight horsepower, which we'll see in a second. We can change the main colour to anything on that palette. We can change the design colour, which is the seat. Then we can have without luggage rack. We can have a front. Why is that so far out? Um, we can have a front luggage rack, a rear luggage rack, or both. Or off completely. You can have without mirrors, with one left mirror, right mirror, both mirrors. You can have the PX125 at 6 horsepower and the 150 at 8 horsepower. Then you can have without windscreen or with windscreen, if you don't want those bugs caught between your teeth as you ride around. Now they, they do sound very, very cool. Stand goes up. We do have a light, the horn, gets up to 37 miles an hour, it's no slouch around the map, first person looks like that, the mirrors aren't the most useful. But I do like the, um, even like the, with the windscreen on, there's a definite difference between with and without. And as far as the little milk boxes go, like I say, you'll find them under pallets, they're only one slot each. I won't go all the way into the menu to show you them, but you can pick them up. Normally, like I say, they come empty. Probably turn that way. And one thing I did find is something you might want to be a little bit careful of. I left this while I was setting everything else up with the pallet, with the uh, boxes on. It doesn't want to stay on there, it didn't earlier, which is a bit weird. Um, the the bike kind of flipped over. I wasn't quite sure why. There we go. And there is a little strap across the back like that. Now you can just do it like that. Strap it on. Obviously put it on a little bit neater than I have, but when you get onto the bike, you have got the option to attach. And it kind of lifts them off the rack a little bit, but it is attached now. You can do the same on the front, and off you go and do your milk deliveries. But I left, like I say, I left both the boxes on. When I came back to get onto it, the whole thing flipped over onto its side. Don't know why. It might have been because I left them strapped on. But, um, yeah, it's an interesting little thing. Straps on or off. Something a bit different, isn't it? <laughs> I like the idea of delivering milk bottles on a Vespa. Crazy, but uh, very cool indeed. That's by Black Eyes Modding. Next up, we've got this. These. Uh, this is the MAN Man TGX ATF Pack by Tarxy007. 26.55 megabytes download. They are 33 slots each on console. You get the lorry with the standard back. I think it's 21,600 litres. Or you can have it either side as a bale loading trailer. Or you can have a slightly longer version, which I think is... I want to say 33,000 litres. We'll check in a second. But even with a longer version, you can also have that um, as a container. Or you can have it bale loading left or right. It's not much else been done to it, considering how high the megabyte download is. Um, there's not a lot of options on these either. So we've got the ATF uh, 012X, 130 grand. That's the 21,600 litre. 640 horsepower, though. We can change the main colour to anything on that palette. 
we can change the design color same thing on that palette and then we've got the ATF 0120 125 left 125 right and then back again there's no tire options lights frames anything like that and then we've got the larger option Oh, 27,700, not 33,000. So 21.6 or 27.7. Same options for main colour and design colour. And then we have got the option for left bail loading, right bail loading. Or back to that again. Lights. Unload here. We can have it rear unload, left or right unload, nice smooth animation. Obviously if you go for the container you don't have the strap options. And with this one we can strap from outside as you can with most vehicles or we can do all or nothing I mean that's, there's not there's no other options on them there's no um, the doors I don't open and close or anything like that I don't, I don't think they do I'm sure I check them and they don't no but we can change the tip side if we want to for example tip side left tip side right we'll just be the opposite of this like so interior nicely detailed tidy Very nice indeed. The MAN TGX ATF pack by Tarxi 007. Let me just turn that off. Okay, next up then. We've got... Oh yeah, let's go over to here. <clears throat> We've got these, or this, in various configurations. This is the Lizard Bogeyman Dolly. Baby Yeager. Um by Mantrid 1.67 megabytes download 17 slots which is fairly high but there's quite a few options and, and some strange goings on with this um, Mantrid doesn't disappoint <laughs> so we've got a dolly here with a longer stretch which could be good for harvesters or various other bits of machinery that might require a longer stretch or the standard version like so there's a few color options and things to choose from these you'll find under tools and Dollies. 10,000 to buy for the bogeyman. Slot count drops down to one. We can change the main colour. And we've got the options again with these. Satins, painted, but there's metallics um, in all various different colours. If we go, say, for metallic aqua, so that does the framework inside. Rim colour does, as you might have guessed. The rim colour. They don't all have to be metallics. You can go for standard and then design colour, let's go for something that stands out a bit, um, painted orange, there we go. So you can just have a normal paint colour, it doesn't have to be metallic, like so. We've got option of Lizard, Trelleborg, Michelin, Nokian, under Lizard, no options, just get standard wheels. Under Trelleborg we've got the option of twin wheels, narrow twin wheels, slightly chunkier, forestry, back to twins, Michelin, standards, and then knock-ins, we've got twin wheels, or we've got narrow twin wheels. Then we've got the arm, standard, or extension. Doesn't cost you anything to have the extension on there. Then this is the weird bit. <laughs> we've got gentle locking, partial locking, hard locking, and locking disabled on the fifth wheel. Now the fifth wheel lock normally is, if you don't want that swivel axle feel, <laughs> you can just lock it out to make it easier for reversing and that kind of thing. I, I don't know if it's me or whether there's something wrong with it. I, and I don't like to say things like that, but I'm not sure. I'll show you what I mean. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a dolly. It, it's, it hooks up to a fifth wheel and then it has a trailer attacher. But what's odd about it... I think this one I went for... I think it's how quickly the turn goes. So it's partial and gentle and that kind of thing. But what we've got is this option here. Um, hang on, I'm on the wrong one. Let's switch to that, where it says lift tipper. 
So L1 and circle, and it does this. Huh? What the? Now, don't get me wrong, that makes it a lot easier for manoeuvring the trailer, but I'm not sure it's supposed to do that. I'm wondering if the lift trailer is supposed to be what locks that in place. Because as you see, as I turned, the, it did move with it. I'm not sure it's supposed to do that. I don't think it is. Um, it's certainly an interesting way of manoeuvring your trailers around. Now, it doesn't do that with every trailer, because I tried it on a well, trailer we're going to have a look at in a minute. And um, it, this moved, but the trailer didn't. So I don't know whether possibly that might need an update or I'm missing something really obvious amongst that. But I do like the extension arm and the colour choices and tyre cho options. Is that Very nice indeed. But it might need a bit of a tweak, possibly. Um, that's by Mantrid. Well, on the same vein as that then, we've got this. And this I really like. It's very nice indeed. This is the Lizard Underbelly Trailer. This is also by Mantrid. 4.92 megabytes download, 10 slots on console. This now comes in at the largest capacity single trailer on console. That one over there, and I always forget who the maker was of that one, is 105,000 in its largest configuration. This is 110. So 110,000 litres, but this has got some brilliant options on it i mean not only i mean you might not like that at all and on the top it's got lizards written across the top but there's, we can change all of that um it's it's very nice anyway yeah sorry it's weird how you kind of get a, almost a bit of a glut of mods over the last few days we've had a lot of sheds and various bits and bobs of that and all of a sudden we get all this stuff and and there's some really nice stuff out today that's why i put on on the thumbnail tip top new mods yeah, the end dump ones. If I remember, I'll put it on the on the video. So the underbelly's here. Ninety grand to buy, hundred and ten thousand litre capacity. Now, very much like the dolly we just looked at, we can change the rim colour, and there's a whole selection we can go for. But they don't all have to be. You can just go for painted on some. Where are we? Let's find a painted version. Oh, doesn't matter. But there there are some. Let's go for a satin yellow. It doesn't matter. Main colour. Also, anything on that palette, like that. I don't know why did that design colour. Does the top cover. And you can just spend a bit of time mixing and matching what you want. Here's the really cool thing. If you go for... Hang on. Dual tank, so split, is 80,000 litre capacity. So 40,000 in each, in each belly, so to speak. Um... If you want the 110,000 litres, you just make it a single tank. And it puts one huge belly dump section in the middle, makes 110,000 litres. That's brilliant. Options for tyres is the same as the Dolly, I think. We've got Lizard, Trelleborg, Michelin and Nokian. And I think the options are the same as the Dolly, pretty much. Um, under Trelleborg, we've got Twins, Forestry, Narrow Twins and Back to Twins. Michelin, Standard, the Nokian, Twins and Narrow Twins. Pretty much. Then we've got the option of beacon light none, front, back, or both. So we can have beacons all around. Cover decal, if you don't like it, don't worry. You can have it small or off completely. And the same with the side decal, you can have it small, off. It's entirely your choice. So quite a few options to choose from. But that's not where it ends either. So I've got the 110,000 litre. It does have a rear trailer hitch, so you could hook multiple ones together, improving your capacity. Beacons. Beacons front and rear, both sides, so everyone's going to know you're coming. Uh, open cover, like so. Single belly dump. But watch what happens when I turn. Look at the rear of the trailer. That is brilliant. How tightly will that turn? Look at that. I mean, I know you can go around pretty much on the spot with the trailer. You have to be careful you don't jackknife. But having that whole rear section steering is brilliant. Lights. Indicators. 
and light suffocation. That is very nice indeed by Mantrid. Very cool. Two thumbs away, away up. Uh, moving on from there, we'll get into those in a minute. We've done the pig pens. Let's whiz over here, shall we? We've got the Bednar. Bednar. We've got the Bednar Terraland pack. This is by Nico Pixies. 12.74 megabytes download. There are three pieces of machinery in this pack. Uh, we have got the... Oh, I didn't write down the numbers for it, the designations. We'll see in the mod tub in just a second. We've got the main cultivator, anyway, six metres wide. It does have a number and a name, but we'll see in a second. Six metres wide. We've then got a cultivator kind of roller pack. I think there's a packer. 6,000. It's got it written on there, hasn't it? Press pack. That's the press pack. <laughs> 6,000. That's what we got rid of somewhere as well. And then we've got the front tank. Now, it's a little bit confusing. The 30 box FB3000 is a fertilizer box. That's the point of it. So what you can do is you hook it up, and you'll see in a minute, it hooks up. We've got options to have fertilizing on this as well. You don't have to have fertilizing on it. So you can cultivate and fertilize at the same time while you're cultivating, which is a great option. But that 30 box is under cedars for some reason. Because um, I immediately thought, well, that's pointless because that's a seed tank. But it's not. It is a fertiliser container. Um, we'll get into the mod tab and have a look because at the moment I'll make an absolute pig's ear of explaining this. But you'll see in just a sec. So, under cultivators. We've got the Terraland TO6000. There we go. Uh, and then we've also got with it the... Um, Press pack PT6000. These can be joined together. Now, do they have to be? Because if you cultivate with one, do you really need a rear press pack? It's, it doesn't actually, technically in game, doesn't add anything. But if you want to go for a more realistic approach for it, you absolutely can if you want to. But then we've got the 30 box as well. Now, slot counts on these nine for the Terraland TO6000. 6 metres wide, 500 horsepower required, runs at 9 miles an hour. The press pack PT, 6 metres wide, requires 60 horsepower. So, I mean, you could run that on the same. We'll double check that in a second. Options on the Terraland TO6000. We can have it without disc, which puts a disc on either end. You can have that with or without that disc. Design standard or Vogelsang Syncult. So if you have it standard, it's a standard cultivator, 6 metres, no problem at all. If you add the Vogelsang Syncult, that puts all the tubes and pipes and necessary equipment to be able to fertilise through it. So it puts the fertiliser out of the back of the sh shanks, so as you're going along, it will do it. Then you can have back attacher, yes or no, puts the back attacher on so you can hook another attacher on the back, which is the other part of this. Again, you don't have to. You can run it as a separate cultivator if you want to. Then the press pack, you don't get anything. In addition, it just comes as it is. And then if we go down to, like I say, under cedars, I don't know why it's not under fertiliser technology, or well, I suppose it's got to be somewhere. We've got the 30 box FB3000. So that says fertiliser there on it. 2,000 litre. That always baffled me. We had this with something else, didn't we? What other mod did this come with? An FB3000 with a 2,000 litre capacity. Always threw me a little bit. Um, that is... How many slots is that? Five. So nine for the main section, eight for the rear packer, and five for the front 30 box. So what we'll do is we'll hook up the 30 box. So... We drive forward and pick up our 30 box because I've got the Vogel Sang Syncult gear on that back one. When I hook up, we get that. The pipe attaches all very nice indeed. So, if I open this up, I can drop it down and I can cultivate. Now, that does seem very dark. Is that already fertilising? Yeah. So I haven't had to turn it on. That's automatically drawing fertiliser. So, I think one thing I do want to check. If I drop off the 30 box, like that, and hook up, even though I've got the Vogelsang Syncult gear on it, if I now go 
that should just cultivate regularly. Yeah, you notice it's lighter, you can probably just about see the line. So without the 30 box, even if you have got the Syncolt gear on there, it will just cultivate with it on, it will fertilise at the same time. So if I now add the rear section on the packer, which again adds a, you know, a bit more realism to it, he says, trying to back up and get it all lined up, because I went for the rear attacher, let's attach that. Unfold that, slides the whole thing back out, becomes a very long... I thought we had already had... Did we have this from Giants? I'm trying to think. So, is it any different? I'm getting the cultivating state, state from the front section. I'm also getting the cultivating state from the second section. So adding that rear section on hasn't technically in-game added anything in, in for this at all. But it is a bit more realistic because in the real world you have the cultivator, the rollers, the packer would just make sure it's all properly leveled and you've got a really, really good seed bed. So here's the next thing I want to check. There we go. So I can just run that section on its own without either of the other bits again if I want to so it's a kind of a bit of a multi-tool I mean like I say to be fair this rear section is just for added added enthusiasm um, to be added on with this because that will do the job and it will give you that look anyway um, I do like the, ad the addition of the Vogel Sang stuff um, and the fact that you can um, fertilise at the same time. I think that's really nice. Great bit of kit. Um, so yeah, that's the Bednar Terraland pack by Nico Pixies. Uh, moving on. Just trying to think how many more we've got left. Not too many, actually. I think we're doing all right. Okay, next. We've got the Lizard N035 by The Fluke and Cam Us. 4.98 megabytes download and... Five slots on console. This is Lime All Fertilizer Spreader. You'll find this under Fertilizer Technology. The N035, 12,000 to buy. It should spread out to 12 meters. I have got one of each. It's a 3,200 litre capacity if you get the extension boards. Main color, we can choose anything from that palette. Rim color, do I just switch? Yep, up to design, rim colour, anything from that palette, I think it's an identical palette, then design colour, like so, extension, without extension it's 2,200 litres, with extension boards 3,200 litres, you can have without stickers or with stickers. Like so. So what we'll do now then... Turn that on. Oh, of course. <laughs> Unfold it first, opens up the door, ready for operation. And there we go, that's the fertilising. So what I want to do now is see if the liming is the same width. Because sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. And I can't ever take it for granted that it is because I've been caught out so many times. Remember to unfold it first. There we go. Turn it on. That looks the same width to me. So this will lime or fertilise out to 12 metres. Very nice indeed. Actually, I'm going to need that for the next mod. So that's the Lizard N035 by The Fluke and Cam Us. Next up, as you can probably tell, we've got something regarding potatoes. This is the KFMR Krakowiak Pyrus. I say Pyrus, not Papyrus, is it? Yeah, Pyrus. Z653. This is by Kerfapski and Ostry. It's 1.5 megabytes download, four slots on console. This is a potato harvester. Now, I could be caught out with this bit because the picture on the, on the website doesn't show the, the crops being topped before. 
but I've got a funny feeling they're going to need to be topped. So, Krukoviak. Now we have got potato harvesters. This is 1.5 metres wide. The same as some of the ones we've already got from Grimmer, but it's a bit cheaper as well. Uh, just so it's four slots, four slots on console. So we go to potato technology, which is just here. On the end, the Pyrus Z653 is 9,000 to buy. If we go across to the kind of other versions of, uh, well, it'd be one of these, won't it? Yeah, 1.5 meter, 1.5 meter, 11,900, 12,500. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit cheaper, slightly different design. This harvester digs potatoes out the ground. Um, yeah, I'm going to need the top runner. Hopefully not. Right, let's turn it on. Fingers crossed. Oh no, we're good. It does need to top first. Awesome. It does leave the potatoes... Mm, it says it leaves the potatoes on the ground. It doesn't seem to be leaving potatoes on the ground. Unload here. That would be why. Make sure you unload here. And there you go. So no topper required. And then you can come along later on with something and pick them up, whatever it may be that you're deciding to use. So that off, it's like always the same, isn't it? All the mods that you encounter, you think it's going to be a certain way. You don't need to test it out first, it'll be fine, and then it surprises you. So there we go. That's the KFMR Krakowiak Pyrus Z653 by Kafapski and Ostri. Very nice indeed. Which brings me on to the last of the mods for today, for this week. Um, this is the Riberi RS100 RB. This is by SMI Modding Team. 16.68 megabytes download, 18 slots on console. It's a loading wagon with a difference. Now I'm sure I saw one of these a while back on Grassmen. I did wonder why we haven't had any of these in game before now, and now we do. It's a bit of a corker this. It is a loading wagon. But it has a built-in mower. So it mows and loads at the same time. That's brilliant. Now something I haven't checked is will it pick up a swath? That's a good point. I assume it's just for mowing. Now there are two different variants of this. The larger capacity one, which is this one, has a longer back on it. But doesn't have the ability to unload left or right. Just has a cage section on the back and it opens up. The smaller capacity one has this section on the back which has a belt and you can unload it left, right or from the back. So if you're going to do feed troughs and stuff inside animal pens and barns and things like that, that's probably a little bit better or easier to use. Very nicely designed, loads of detail on them. So, under loading wagons. The RS100 RB on the end there. 85 horsepower required, which isn't very much at all either for a loading wagon. Capacity on the smaller one is 34,000 litres, but that has this either side unload if you want to go for that. Or well, the larger capacity is 35,500, but then you lose that ability. It just puts a kind of cage system on the back instead. I mean, in all honesty, they look almost the same size, but yeah, the capacity is slightly larger on that version. So let's see it in operation, shall we? So we'll open that up. Yeah, I don't know that you can, you know. So that, I suppose that is going to make it a bit of a one-trick pony in that a regular loading wagon will pick up hay, straw, grass. This will only be able to mow and pick up, I guess. So I can lower the pickup, but that's got the mower attached in the front of it, so potentially. I still like it as a concept, as an idea. I think it's absolutely brilliant. So, unfold mower, L1 and X. Swings the whole out to the side, like that. Now, if I do uh, L1 and right stick side to side, I can swing that backwards and forwards. If I want it to be directly behind my tractor, 
I can just swing it right all the way across and bring it behind. Be careful if you do that, because if you forget, when you come off the field, it kind of locks it into place and you can get stuck trying to turn to the left. As you can see now, it doesn't want to turn properly. You have to unfold it again, and then it will allow me to turn. So you just have to make sure you fold and unfold, regardless of what position you've left it in, it still gets folded again. So what we'll do is we'll turn it on, which starts the mowers up at the front. Lower down the pickup. Let's go around that side so we can see that. Raise and lower the mowers. Or mower. And away we go. Now, okay, admittedly, you can just stick a front mower on the front of your tractor and have a loading wagon behind you and do this anyway. But it is one of those things I have often wondered why have I not got one that's built in? Um, and, like I say, now we have. It's something a little bit different, isn't it? We do have a new map out today, which I'm going to have a look at, which has potentially... <clears throat> some very cool features assuming of course they're not just for PC <laughs> I don't think know what TNT is like I hope not <clears throat> but Lazy Acres Farm dropped today by TNT modding I'm just going to read you something here like I say fingers crossed I'm going to be looking at this later on today and probably putting up a map tour tomorrow um, it says two trains running to all cell points on the map additional fruit types carrot onion sorghum millet and rye all the necessary equipment to plant and harvest additional fruits. So, potentially, we've got new equipment, not other people's equipment, not unrealistic equipment, but added in equipment to do extra crop types. Now, don't hold me to that, because I've got to check on it. I haven't been on there yet. Um, I will have a look, and then we'll post something tomorrow, or maybe later on tonight. We'll see how time goes to see if that's the case but that's lazy acres farm by tnt modding i hope you found this useful and informative in some way shape or form if you have give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching